OT has this has this funny uh, way about trends that whatever happened in let's say corporate IT happens in OT just later down the road. Um, you know, 10 years ago that later was much wider. Today they want to follow you know what IT learned uh, over the last you know 30 years uh, faster. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Powers, a series of video podcasts about IT security strategy. Here we are uh, discussing um, about uh, myths of this field as well as uh, career paths and specializations. Uh, today we will be discussing about the operational technology with uh, Michał Paulski. Um, welcome to the studio. I'm very glad to see you here. Thank you for having me. My uh, guest uh, leads industrial control systems, security business for Europe. Uh, that's a very important field. But mm, let me, uh, at the beginning, let me express my great surprise. Uh, why don't you wear a, a civil helmet today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we don't wear those uh, indoors that much. But yeah, indeed, in our line of work, we do sometimes need to wear protective equipment in the places where we need to go to. Yeah, because because uh, your field is joining uh, uh, IT with with some hard stuff. Uh, yeah, you, you can put it like that. So we we work. Uh, uh, our work is about securing uh, the computers that are controlling or monitoring physical processes. So your power plants, refineries, factories, your car. Uh, so that uh, that kind of drives why uh, why we have to wear these uh, these protective equipments every once in a while. Okay, so uh, so now let's so let's focus on on your uh, real job. I mean, uh, what kind of uh, projects do you realize with your team nowadays? Right. So you can divide what we do into three, maybe four categories of services. So the first one would be your general current state assessment. So a company who all of a sudden realized that, hey, we do have these control systems in our environment and we want to make sure that if we have any problem that causes risk to our continuity, uh, let alone safety, quality of the products that we put out, uh, then we want to find out what these problems are and we want to prioritize because money is limited for everybody and there is usually more issues that we can fix. Uh, so they want to find out where to start and uh, how to do it. So that's the first category. Um, the second one would be designing the target state for them. And that can be anything from uh, network design to uh, policy of how do you patch your systems. Um, the third category would be, would be uh, implementing those things, right? So it's one thing to design it, and then sometimes clients are able to pick it up by themselves. Sometimes they're asking us uh, to actually do it for them. Uh, bring the hardware, bring the software, install it, make it work, train the personnel. Uh, and the last one is, uh, I suppose, something that's becoming more and more popular. It's all these services that we can insource from the client. So the client does not want to build their own security team. They don't want to build their own infrastructure maintenance team. So they can outsource it to companies like ours uh, and, uh, you know, focus on the core of their uh, of their business, which is, again, making fuel, making power, okay. making cars. How, how those uh, four categories uh, goes together? I mean, uh, I mean... Uh, uh, is it uh, is, is it a, um, uh, uh, one project that you lead with, with one client or or uh, or, or not? Mm -hmm. Well, so we have both cases, I suppose. So sometimes clients uh, only order one part of the puzzle and then they can do the rest by themselves. Sometimes they are completely at a stage zero and two, they want to have a turnkey solution. In which case, we would do all of these phases uh, in uh, one program, not a project maybe, but a program. So it really depends on the client, how mature they are, where we start with them, uh, you know, how much risk they want to reduce, because it's not all of the tools that we can implement are uh, really needed by everybody. So it depends on the industry, on the okay. context of, you know, geopolitics, things like that. Okay. What kind of uh, industry are popular uh, in your field? Popular? Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, I guess the, the, the market for, for services like this started uh, in, let's say, the critical infrastructure uh, industry. So power generation, transmission, distribution, um, oil and gas, uh, certain types of manufacturing, uh, water uh, management, wastewater management. So you can call those popular, I suppose. But that's... You know, these days we see demand from all sorts of places that, uh, you know, are not, let's say, national critical infrastructure, but it's still their business. So they want to make sure that we don't have a shutdown all of a sudden because of ransomware in the factory. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about uh, trends. I mean, uh, let's uh, let's see the, 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 this closer, uh, closer uh, future and further future 
Let's mm-hmm. let's uh, see something behind the horizon, for example. Mm-hmm. Behind the horizon. Um, so OT has this has this funny uh, way about trends that whatever happened in let's say corporate IT happens in OT just later down the road. Um, you know, 10 years ago, that later was much wider. Today, they want to follow, you know, what IT learned uh, over the last, you know, 30 years uh, faster, right? Uh, because of, again, the, the geopolitical context, the growth in threats, uh, but also the, the growth in just awareness of what can happen. It's just, you know, OT is just another computer. So it's vulnerable to the same stuff that uh, your, your home laptop would be vulnerable to, except the consequences of an incident are no longer just data leaks. We're talking, you know, safety issues. Issues, you know, explosions, things like that in a worst case scenario, uh, down to more, let's say, daily issues like just shutdown of production. So that kind of drives the trends with, that we see in the market. And I suppose one of the more interesting ones for, for, for us is that uh, companies are moving from not really doing much about cybersecurity, wanting to go into this target perfect state, which you know, in IT was going through all these phases uh, from, you know, let's fix issues locally to let's try to optimize cost of how we do things. In OT, it sort of happens all at once these days. So we have a lot of uh, projects where we both implement cybersecurity tools and processes, but also try to centralize it in a way that it doesn't drive costs as much as it would if it would be built, you know, on every refinery um, uh, by itself or every factory by itself, which is what it used to be, I suppose. So this the centralization and, and standardization of tools and processes, I guess, the big trend that we see, which translates to all sorts of issues because every factory is different to an extent. So we, we kind of have to play with that a bit. Okay, okay, I understand. <clears throat> uh, so... Uh could you give us uh, a few examples, a uh, few case studies uh, about uh, about this this uh, this approach this approach of mm. uh, of business to to your field? Uh, sure. So I guess one of the recent projects that we were doing was uh, was about rolling out uh, selected like basic tools for cybersecurity that you can think of, which by themselves would not cause that much of a problem to implement, but. If we're talking about doing that on more than 100 sites across the world, then the logistics themselves of all this uh, all this thing uh, become become an issue, right? And if if you work on a single plan, then you can do a lot of these little patchwork solutions that fix the problem, but may not be you know super mature in terms of long term maintenance. When we do this across 100 sites, we, we cannot afford this approach, right? Because even if we fix it now. You know, before we are done with the site number 100, there's going to be more issues on the site number one, right? So we have to, again, go into this target state, which requires sometimes just forcing things that we know will work in the end, but may not seem like a, you know, fastest way to fix that little problem on that one site out of 100. Um, uh, so that would be one. Um, another one could be... Uh, so there's always some kind of a new implementation going on with with clients like ours. So they they implement a new system because the old ones uh, was uh, was just not maintainable, or they are just building a new facility. Uh, so and these tend to be projects that last for two, three, four years. Because when you're building a power plant, it you know the, putting the walls up it takes uh, takes a while. So cybersecurity is often kind of one of those details that is left for later, and then we end up you know having to. Uh, tell the client that, look, you have two options. Either you delay go live for your plant, which is never something that would be accepted, or you have these workarounds and these things you need to do now and these things you can delay for later if, as long as you accept the risk of you know, having doors open for a little longer than you would have if you, you know, address the security topic early enough to define it uh, down to the level of detail that will not leave a lot of room for interpretation you know, two years down the road when you will actually be doing that part of the whole capital project. So that's a, that's an interesting thing to uh, to work in because you're no longer you're no longer dealing just with the technical topics, but you have to deal with all these other aspects down to just soft things like people being reluctant to change that you need to uh, deal with and really help them understand why this is needed, why it's no longer okay to have just a uh, you know username and a short password that uh, that uh, is between you and you know shutting a power plant down. Okay. Uh, what is easier for you and uh, for your team uh, to um, to make a new system or uh, um, or updating uh, uh, systems that that are uh, that are in use? Mm. Oh, definitely the first one. I mean, when 
before the system is live, there is all sorts of things that we can influence from, you know, design options to uh, what do we do now? What can we delay for later? With existing infrastructure, there's always this, this notion of, you know, technical constraints, technological depth. Uh, again, people who just got used to doing things in a certain way, which really need to have some handholding to, to switch to the new ways. Uh, cost always is an issue. And with OT, the, the trouble is that the life cycle of these systems is, is very long. So we're talking, you know, five years is a minimum and we're usually talking 10, if not more. So we just have to live with it, right? So there are, there are workarounds that we, can, that we can implement to, let's say, achieve the same goal in terms of risk reduction, but not in a way that we would have done if the system was new and we could kind of fix it at the source instead of, let's say, at the boundaries of the system, for okay. example. As you mentioned people, let me ask about, uh, about people. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, could you tell us uh, a, a specific profile, uh, employee profile in, in your team? I mean, what kind of people uh, you work with? Uh, oh, that's that's a nice one, and I, I would give a different answer five years ago than I that I can give now. And then the reason for it is that, first of all, based on the fact that these projects are so big these days, and they touch not just uh, you know some configuration of some server down the plant, they they also talk about again the, the processes of handling those systems and maintaining those. So the profile of an employee can be anything from super technical expert that understands everything about how oil is refined into fuel. So that helps us to translate some issue on a server into consequence scenario uh, up to a person that will handle, you know, personal trainings and can really be soft on people and, and tell them that this is a necessary evil that we have security in place. You know, if there weren't bad people out there, then we wouldn't have jobs. But unfortunately, we're not in that space. So we really have a spectrum of skills from very technical to very, uh, very, let's say, soft skills, so to speak. Uh, because otherwise, you know, if we only had technical profiles, which used to be the case, I suppose, those our things would stay on paper, but that's that's not a goal that we want to achieve. Okay, how long will last the process of uh, uh, onboarding uh, employee? Uh, I, I don't think it ever ends, to be honest. Uh, so we, we have a lot of kind of on the job training because we we also are commercial enterprise so we can't afford but to just train people for two years right so uh, we usually spend a lot of time initially to get people introduced especially if we hire people straight from school uh, which is another aspect that changed completely over the last few years i would never say five years ago that i could hire people straight from school because there is a certain amount of experience that you need to have to be able to help your clients but because these projects are again large in scope, there is always a piece of work that you can hand over to someone more junior with uh, with some supervision than have you know senior experts doing every single role on the project. Um, so having that said, I mean, I've been doing that for 12 years. I don't think I've learned 5% of what's, what's out there. But as a team, I think we can complement each other by, again, someone having technical skills, someone else having more soft skills, someone else coming from IT and, 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 and telling us what's new out there in terms of toys. Uh, someone else being a, a you know chemical engineer and telling us you know that issue on that server means that in terms of impact on that uh, that facility. So uh, that never ends really. I mean, we we try to keep focus within the team that because otherwise you would just know a little bit about everything, which is not really something we want to do. Um, so we keep our focus areas and try to stay up to date with everything else, but without trying to become an expert in in those okay. other fields. How how long do you work uh, from? Office or home office, or um, how often do do you do you have to go to to, to the clients uh, in, mm -hmm. in the client's office? Right. I I guess that the answer would be different pre-COVID and today. Uh, yeah. Pre-COVID, it was about 30-40% of our time when we would go on a plant to uh, either collect data or or do some implementation type of work. Uh, during COVID, obviously, it was much less. So we moved to more remote operations where we have someone from the personnel on the side telling us what they see and answering our questions. Uh, now it's opening a little bit again. So over the next month and a half, I think I have like six travel scheduled, but that's, that's an exceptional case. And now let me ask the last question about uh, the fact that uh, how does your domain fit into all activities of uh, Accenture? Mm -hmm. So since I joined, which is uh, what, over seven years ago, that, that changed completely from, from what I saw initially when, you know, Accenture always had security services, but they were always kind of part of other departments, so to speak. But at some point in time, it was decided that, uh, okay, we need to combine these folks into one team because there's just too much work both internally and for the clients to kind of 
keep the knowledge separated to, uh, as it as it was before. And since then, it just went from you know being a niche service to being one of the strategic pillars for for Accenture growth next to uh, cloud, uh, digital, broadly understood, and what we call Industry X. Um, and uh, yeah, today it's it's even like shown on our annual reports that this is one of the you know top priorities for Accenture, and that we get a lot of love in terms of investment into trainings, you know, tools that we need to do our work, hiring people from the market that are you know ex- extremely rare in terms of their experience, uh, comparing to other industries, so to speak. Right? I mean, the, the the situation is better than ten years ago, but it's definitely still uh, low on demand. So we also have to make sure that we attract people based on the fact that we project we do projects the way we do, and we also reward people the way we do. And uh, I guess that that fact that security is part of everything else that Accenture does, because we always work one way or another close to technology. And uh, you know, doing technology that we that we bring into clients, either implementing some systems or just uh, telling people how to use all the tools that that are out there in the market, because it's not so easy to choose out of options that are available. Then you know, doing this without security would be like you know, getting a car that doesn't have good brakes or seat belts and airbags, right? We just cannot afford doing that as a company. Uh, and that branched into uh, services that are sort of standalone security focused and that we do for clients because. There's just so much demand for it. So again, we're being a commercial enterprise. Obviously, we saw the market and we we thought, uh, hey, let's try to help clients uh, that way as well. And uh, you know, clients are also demanding that from us as a sort of a single window uh, company to support everything related to technology and security as a big part of it. So uh, that made it uh, a huge, uh, huge um, uh, you know argument to make it one of the strategic pillars. And I guess the last thing that that drove our our growth was the fact that. Next to us, the, the department, as we can, as, as, as I can call it, that's called Industry X, uh, which is our term for Industry 4.0, except we don't have to update the name next time it updates. Uh, that's that's all the things that's that are related to automating, uh, manufacturing, uh, industry in principle, making it more digital in the sense that we're not going to digital physical pro- digitalize physical processes obviously but there is a lot more data about it that we can extract to optimize it to see if there are any issues from energy uh, consumption to waste management and so on so growth in that area translates into growth in security because again we are part of that uh, and at some point in time we actually merge those uh, those two teams under one organization so to speak so that we make sure that we systematically collaborate instead of just because we you know, know each other uh, well and so on. So uh, that, that really drove huge, huge growth in, in how, he, how, he, how we maintain the team, how we hire, uh, where can we hire around the world. So that's... Uh, Do you think that you will meet all of expectations uh, from client side? I mean, um, I think that uh, uh, these expectations will grow up. Oh yeah, yeah, and especially these days. I mean, there's yeah. there's so much uh, you know will to do everything at once at a short notice that uh, then, then all the other companies like us have the same issue, right? So whether we meet all the expectations, we're doing our best, uh, but we were definitely short on uh, people. So the sooner we're called, uh, the, the more uh, the more uh, able to help we are. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're growing like crazy also through investments. We noticed uh, when, when I joined, at least since then, we, I think, acquired six or seven companies uh, between 50 to 300 people. So it's, you know, that, that kind of shows the, uh, the dedication of our top leadership to, uh, to invest in this field because growing organically just uh, wasn't possible for us. So hopefully that will be enough to uh, help all the clients we want to help. Um, but yeah, the, the, the shortage of stuff is, is everywhere for, for these things. And, and again, the clients who are, let's say, late with getting into this field uh, obviously have a bigger issue than those who sort of started in that, uh, you know, five, ten years ago. And now they just have some latest fixes to implement. But overall, they are in good condition. Thank you very much. That's all f- uh, from our side. Uh, uh, Michał Paulski, uh, who leads industrial control system security business for Europe in Accenture, was my guest. Thank you very much for, for being with us. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much and uh, see you soon.